everyone has heard of the Hamptons. It's where New York's rich and famous get their summer on. But these past few months, the Hamptons has also been the home of a major dispute. Michael Costa has more. When you think of the Hamptons, you think of pristine beaches, cold rosé, and dressing up as a caterer to sneak into Billy Joel's Labor Day party. But the Hamptons also have a dark side, an ancient conflict between the white man and his mansions and the Shinnecock, a native tribe who lived next door on their ancestral lands. Now, the conflict is erupting again as the Shinnecock have erected a giant tribal monument on the only road into the Hamptons. I went to find out how an indigenous symbol could raise tensions in a place with the world's highest concentration of NPR tote bags. It is kind of an eyesore. You know, you come here for its beautiful nature and environment, and to see that, it's just out of place. Uh, very obtrusive and distracting. OK. Just it's so big. Right. There's so much to kind of cover from yeah. top to bottom. It's distracting, and so it could be potentially dangerous okay. for any of the drivers. OK, it's potentially dangerous for drivers, but that's not the main objection. I believe that it doesn't allow you to maintain uh, the purity of an enclave here. When white people start talking about purity, even I get a little creeped out. But many of these Hamptonites really believe the monument infringes on their spiritual connection to the land. To get the tribe's perspective, I met with Chairman Brian Polite. And no, I'm not going to make fun of his name. That would be rude. Brian, thank you for sitting down. I know you've had some bad experiences with the white man, but I come in peace. Hey, man, we're all about peace. The people of Southampton are saying that due to your monument, their way of life is under attack. <laughs> You're laughing, okay. <laughs> That's just laughable. We're a sovereign nation, and they have no authority to tell us what we can and cannot do on our tribe of land. What was the reaction within the tribe when the monument went up? Very happy. We're the forgotten people of the Hamptons. So now we have our marker on the gateway of the Hamptons reminding people that they're all visitors on our land. Clearly, the monument is a source of pride, but what is it? Could it be a totem, a rock carving, or an ancient burial mound? I couldn't wait to experience this mysterious tribal monument for myself. Holy shit, it's a billboard. I've never seen anything so big. I mean, I have, but it's pretty big. So these natives are using capitalism to ruin the white man's sacred way of living with nature. Talk about cultural appropriation. This tribal monument? Looks a lot like an electronic billboard. If you ask anybody on the Shinnecock Nation, they'll say it's a monument. Let's call it what it is. This monument is your side hustle. You're making some extra money on the side. It's a monument to our overcoming adversity mm -hmm. and saying that we're still here. But also, we need uh, money for education, police department, playgrounds, social programs. So it'll have an immediate economic impact to the nation. How much of this monument is economics for the tribe, and how much of it is kind of a fuck you to the Hampton residents? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. Now, you see, that's not very polite. Every time somebody builds a McMansion on our ancestors' bones or plays golf on our ancestors' bones, that's a big F you to us. Mm -hmm. So if we can feed our people and at the same time stick it to a town that stuck it to us for the last 375 years, so much the better. OK. So, I just want you to know that no more golf for me. Thank you. In response to the monument, white people have been sharing an important part of their culture, lawsuits. Members of the tribe see these as part of a long pattern of oppression. Well, there's some restitution and reparations that have to be made, and this sign is, a, is pointing to it. The time is now. It's horrible, the way we've been treated since 1640. Yeah, I can go into town and I can mow your lawn and I can scrub your toilet and I can pretend like it's okay no more. Come to my reservation and see why this is so important to make a stand. As a white man, facing a 400-year legacy of injustice, racism, and poverty made me feel like a total piece of shit. But gazing across the bay at Calvin Klein's $75 million mega mansion, it hit me. Maybe I could be the guy in that Kevin Costner movie and bring a message of peace to the Pale Faces. And I knew the perfect way to reach them. Problem solved. Michael Costa, everyone.